He's an addict. That might be an issue. We'll it's fine. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> It stayed. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Road from Emmaus podcast. I'm Jason Lowe, joined by Andrew Chow, and we are two totally ordinary Catholic guys hoping to share our journeys. Like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, we've each encountered Christ in our lives. Join us as we talk about what comes next. On today's episode, we start off talking about marriage within the context of the Catholic Church as a sacrament. We tackle some common questions about the Church's teachings on marriage and then zoom out to talk about what it really means to be a disciple of Christ and how that often means giving up some things that we want for ourselves. Andrew, yeah, I need you to do some math for me. What's up? How long has it been since you got engaged with Cherry? Oh boy! And you just count some days. It has been a month. I need you to do this, the actual number of days. The actual number of days. Goodness, it has been. So you, 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 your intention was proposing on. The... I wanted to propose on the sixteenth, but I ended up proposing on the fifteenth. But why? Because of bad weather. <laughs> or why did I choose you, that day? Why did you choose the 16th is what I meant. <laughs> I chose the 16th because the 16th was the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Yeah. Um, but you still got it in because you... It, it was, was the vigil. vigil. It was the vigil, You did it yes. after like... 14, after four. Yeah. After four, yeah. So it was a vigil, technically, uh, of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And it has been many days. It has been uh, 31 nice. plus... 16 nice. plus 3. Nice. So that is 31 plus 16 is 49. 47. 40... <laughs> this is why I'm the accountant. It's okay. I also did the math before before we started. And All I right. put you on the spot. So, so. so how many days is it? It's 50. Jason? Is it 50 Happy days? 50 days. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah. So 50 days of being officially thinking about marriage, I guess. Yeah, I guess um, so. I can tell you how many days I have been in that status it's been zero days but uh i guess that was a very contrived segue to get into why or what we're talking about today um or what we're starting off our show so uh welcome to our second episode um of the road from amaze podcast um i'm jason this is andrew i don't know why i'm doing an introduction because we have a pre-recorded introduction anyway but in case you don't know us well enough that's what all the pros do isn't it <laughs> speaking of which um we do have our first episode up um so go check that out um but where we talk about vocations and i guess that kind of does transition into our our episode here today um so yeah about marriage and really talking about why um it's such an important thing within the context of the catholic church yeah um so often i think you know nowadays within the outside world um marriage is just viewed as it's almost like it's just the next step kind of yeah um and that's a very i think a very basic way of looking at it right um Within the context of the Catholic Church, marriage is a sacrament. And yeah. what does that mean? Sacrament where you're, it's not just a union between you and your new spouse. Um, it's something where you're truly inviting God in. And because you're doing that, it's it, it's something that's really holy. That's become, your relationship has become consecrated yeah. um, to God. And I think a lot of people maybe don't really internalize that like what that really means yeah right it's not just that next step and i think that's kind of what we want to get into today yeah Um, definitely and i mean like especially when you when you take a look at that word right consecrate it's one of those things that i feel like we hear so often and we never really kind of take apart right um and and when we think about it you know the the core of that word consecrate is really sacred right It's, it's making something sacred making something set aside for god and I think that that's something where, especially when we're talking about the marriage context, you, you've already said it, um, society's almost watered it down to this like yeah. ultimate profession of love. Right? Yeah. It's like, I love Cherry more than I love anyone else. And that's kind of all it means. Mm-hmm. But in the Catholic sense, there's so much more in it. And it really ties into what we talked about last episode, talking about that fullness of life and that pursuit of God, right? 
and I think something that's really cool is this this relationship, this union, mm-hmm. is it's sealed by God Himself, right? When yeah. within the context of the Mass, um, within the context of the sacrament, obviously, this is something that is it's not just like some minister's approval or you know the mm-hmm. city's approval or something. This is God Himself saying, "I I bind you," um, and I think the weightiness of this can't be understated. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if I feel like if, if everyone understood this, you know, divorces wouldn't really happen that much. Yeah. Um, and whatever whatever brokenness that might happen within your relationship, you understand that God, you place God within it and yeah. it finds its way to, towards healing. Well, it, it, I mean, when we take a look at that, when we take a look at, you know, um, the unions that happen and then the ways that, you know, different, um, the ways that you can approach, I guess, marriage and, and the faith. I think when we take a look at how the secular world looks at it, it's, it's what's the preparation for it, right? What does that really look like in the secular sense? It's, it's the time of dating, right? Then in the time of dating, what are you focused on? You're focused on the other person. You're focused on you two as a pair. And it's like, are we compatible? That's yeah. always the, the, the topic, right? Are we compatible? Um, and then when we think about it in the Catholic sense, um, kind of the tragedy is that so many Catholics just accept that yeah. right and we and we don't take a look at what does this concept of sacrament mean right in the same way that you know um priests you mentioned uh you mentioned last episode that when we're discerning for priesthood when someone is discerning for priesthood they spend you know up to seven years in the seminary mm-hmm. maybe even more depending yeah. on their journey yeah. right and there's all this time of preparation whereas for marriage it almost seems like the time that we spend with the church is like a marriage prep course mm-hmm. which if you take the long one it's 6 weeks and it, and you know it, it doesn't quite seem to compare and it almost it almost um i guess minimizes how much really discernment and devotion needs yeah. to go into it right yeah for sure and i think that really sets us up for i guess a few of the common questions that we might hear mm-hmm. um and totally understandable, right? Like, again, you you look at how marriage is portrayed in the movies or just in general. Um, but I think understanding, again, um, that marriage is a sacrament and how important it is that we, we remember that it is. There are a few common questions that kind of come up um, that maybe we want to talk about today. Yeah. <clears throat> so the first one being um, destination weddings. Yeah. Um, or just weddings in general outside of the church. I think it's it's totally understandable, again, you know, just... Thinking about all these places that are really meaningful to you, um, you know, maybe there's like a lake that you grew up at or something, sure. or um, you've always wanted to have your wedding in Hawaii or something. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just cherry picking places, but um, what, like, you you compare that to, you know, the church, you know, like having it within some parish or something, and, um, you know, you can definitely kind of see from that specific perspective why it, it feels dreary or it mm. feels boring. But I would kind of flip that, I think. it's, I think it's understanding that, you know, first of all, like, the most important thing is that it's not about you, right? Yeah. Um, if, if you really understand that marriage is a sacrament, that um, this is about God sealing this relationship that he's binding you to um, in your love for one, another, in, for one another, and then you're inviting God into this relationship, I think that understanding that because it's not about you and because this is um, such a holy... Thing that's going on um that really places the importance on why like it, it should be held in a church i guess yeah and i think like when we talk about you know marriage as a sacrament then we also need to take a look at what are the other sacraments and that context also helps us understand what the point is and when we think about you know sacraments as a whole you know baptism uh, confirmation yeah. reconciliation all of them you know they're always pointing in the same direction it's always about reordering us redirecting us towards god and if we think about it in that context, now all of a sudden, like destination weddings start to make less sense, yeah. right? Because how can I be saying that I'm directing myself towards God if my choice is to do this away from God, Yeah. right? It, start, it doesn't quite add up at that point. I think that's a perfect point. And yeah, you know, it's this whole journey of getting married. It's you're, you're giving yourself as a gift to your spouse. Um, and then together you're giving yourselves as a gift to God, yeah. right? Um, and like you said, that, like the best place to do that is basically in a church, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think just thinking about some other common questions, um, I guess something I've heard recently is about writing your own vows. Mm. And it's it's all the same theme, right? It's all the same theme. And we, we are going to get into this a little bit later, um, just about why, um, like, why it's so important that you make your decision to choose to follow Christ. 
and you orient your entire life towards this around this decision. Mm-hmm. So right within the context of writing your own vows, um, again, I get it because, you know, thinking about all the things that you want to say to your spouse, all the things that you want to profess, and this is kind of like your only time, except it's not really, but it's like your, your big moment to, to say those things. Um, but I think it's, the, first of all, I guess from a more formal perspective, um, the church has its own written vows to cover four really important things. And those four really important things are to ensure that your relationship and that your love for one another are, and people may have heard this before, but free, total, faithful, and fruitful. So these four things are almost like pillars of how your relationship is supposed to be structured within the church, mm-hmm. because you're giving yourself freely to the other person. Um, you're, like you're not, you're not being forced or anything. You're giving yourself totally. Uh, it's not just part of you. It's not just, it's not just your body. It's not just your mind or one particular strength that is really admirable. It's, it's your weaknesses. It's your moments of, of despair. Right. Um, and of course all the joyous moments, et cetera. It's, it's entirely you giving yourself totally. Um, third thing being, I think faithful was the third one that I said. So yeah, being faithful is you're only giving yourself to this, to this other person. Mm -hmm. You're, um, you're not giving um, any of yourself to someone else, um, you know, outside of the marriage. And then being fruitful is just being open to having children. Yeah. Um, and allowing God to, um, yeah, make fruit out of your, out of this relationship. And so these four things upon which love is, uh, so heavily based, the vows that the church writes for you are like they they fully cover them and i think that's really important to know i i I think it's easy to not understand this yeah uh, but i think it's important to remember when you think about uh why you know the church has has it has its own vows yeah i think also wrapped up in this whole discussion is a bigger topic that we might need to kind of spend a whole episode on at some point but it's it's also understanding the importance of tradition in the church right um you know, it's one of these things where it comes back to the same theme of which direction are we pointed in? And if and if we believe that the direction we should be pointed in is towards God, then what we need to be able to see then is how tradition is directly handed down from him, right? Mm-hmm. So we think about things like the wedding, for example, right? And how this is reflected in the Bible stories, the wedding of Cana, right? And, yeah. and so many different um, places throughout the Bible where you know, the understanding of a a proper union between men and women are are kind of spoken to there. If this is something that we can start to appreciate, not necessarily in the entirety of the subject, but more so in like the general concept that like, I want to be able to experience love in the way that the the church has handed it down, then I think it also becomes easier to be like, okay, you know what, maybe these vows seem a little bit foreign to me, right? Sure, you know, these four principles sound good, but maybe things are a little bit different Mm -hmm. uh, than than the way that I might conceptualize things. Well, you know, part of what we need to understand as as Catholics is that the point isn't always that we get all of it, right? There there is an element of obedience Mm -hmm. in here, right? No no matter how tough that pill is to swallow. Yeah, for sure. Um, And I guess another really common question that we have um, is the whole, it's about sex. Um, You know, why isn't sex allowed outside of marriage, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important again, to remember what we just talked about on what love is based. So mm-hmm. free, total, faithful, and fruitful. Before we get to that, I, like, I think something that is really beautiful that I heard, um, is that sex is a, the marital act, right? The sexual embrace is the consummation of your wedding vows. So you make your vows to one another. You, you make your promises to take care of one another. I don't have it memorized, but to love each other uh, freely and to- and give yourselves totally um, be- to be faithful to one another and, and to uh, be open to having children. Um, sex is basically the physical uh, consummation of those, of those verbal vows. Yeah. All right. And I think that's such a beautiful, I think it was JP two that said it actually, that um, your body is making a promise um, that you make with, with your words. Yeah. Um, and so I think thinking of the marital act from that perspective, it, it kind of, it makes it such, so much of a deeper thing, right? It's not just about the pleasure that comes from it. Um, but also just understanding that this is truly out of love and it's so easy to, uh, I guess, blur the lines and to be like, Oh, like I'm, I fool yourself into thinking that like, Oh, like this is how I feel about a person. I definitely love them. But I guess what, you know, what the church would say is probably, you know, prove it through, um, through the holy union that is marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think tied into that is the concept of dignity, 
right? In, in the idea that one of the things you touched on, right, is um, the second point. So not freely and then fully, yeah. right? You had mentioned that, you know, you're giving all of this self, your, your soul to, to the other person, yeah. right? And and the soul is one of those topics that's only ever really lightly touched on. But I believe it's St. Thomas Aquinas who said it, um, where the soul is within the body, but it's not contained by it. And kind of the concept here is, is that the soul is like your entire self, right? fully captured. Yeah. And, and that's almost, you know, if you think about that, that's that's a, a picture of your dignity as well, mm-hmm. right? And so when we think about marriage, marriage is the outward declaration, right, to the world that this is that other person that I will give myself fully to. Yeah. When you do, you know, the sexual act without that sacrament yeah. having happened, yeah. then you're saying behind closed doors, I want to say this, but I'm not going to say it in, in the public. Yeah which is now you're living a, you're living a double life yeah. right to some degree and that's where whether yourself or the other person and in fact it's yourself and the other person both of you now have lost some of your dignity by doing that right? yeah and so you know these three examples of common questions we kind of just I guess almost put it out there in almost bullet point form yeah and I stylistically there was kind of a point to that um, I think being you know we just put it out there and it feels like the rules. Yeah. Right? It just feels like uh, the church is placing these these shackles on us and yeah. um, we're forced to live the way the church wants us to live in order for us to get to this place that we call heaven. Mm-hmm. I think it's important to reorient that thought towards thinking that um, this isn't about following rules. This is about living a life where you're becoming Jesus' dis- disciple because the path that Jesus leads us on is the path that's going to bring us the most happiness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think um, it's actually really interesting. So Jason and I, we both, uh, we watched um, the homily that Bishop Barron had on on the 30th of August. So anyone who is uh, anyone who's listening to this pod, f- please feel free to check that out. It's, it's a really beautiful homily. And in it, um, Bishop Barron actually speaks about um, this painting, right? Where um, I think it's called Romans in Their Decadence, uh, something like that. But... Um, it kind of speaks to high level, um, this idea that, you know, the things of this world, the pleasures of this world, despite, you know, you know, the pleasure that's there, right? It doesn't quite give you that which you want, that, that which you really desire deep down. And so this is kind of um, what we're getting at here, right? Is that, look, if, 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 you're, if your dad tells you, right, don't walk on the road when there are cars there, you know, it, it's easy to think like, man, like, why do you just want me to not go there? But you know, there's a reason behind it. And and I think we're going to get into a little bit more of what that is. We can get into it now. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Sure. So, uh, yeah. So one, one of those big things is, you know, we, we focus so much about this fullness of life idea, this idea of, um, you know, following God's will. So what does that, what does that mean? Um, I think one of the core principles here is to understand what and who God is, right? Um, and, and we've all heard this kind of, this phrase that God is love and it almost sounds like uh, a Hallmark card, right? It, it's, <laughs> it just sounds like one of these things. Nice. It's like, it's almost so cliche at this point, but, but let's break it down, right? What, what does it mean to be love, right? What, what does it mean to love loving in the sense of a gift of self loving in the sense of the complete, um, you know, decision to prioritize the other person, right? If, if we think about it that way, then when we think about God being that, entire concept and everything that's included in there and then when we're talking about living a full life and we talk about you know fullness of life is union with god then that also means that fullness of life is aligning ourselves with giving of ourselves right yeah and so again tying this right back to these these concepts that we brought up right the dignity that that you lose when when you uh you know do the sexual act not not in the not in the context of a married life um, you know, when you start to make weddings about yourself and yeah. do destination weddings, yeah. um, like these are all turning in the other direction, right? Mm-hmm. Turning back in towards yourself. And this is where we start to lose that alignment towards God. I want to talk a bit more about that painting. So I've just pulled it up. Um, again, it's called Romans during the decadence, apparently. It's in the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, per- Paris or Paris. <laughs> I don't know. We are cultured. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right, I can't recover from that. Anyway, so yeah, I'm looking at this painting and 
I'm basically just going to rip off how Bishop Robert Barron described it. But there's there's all this basically all this earthly pleasure that's going on. Yeah. Um, you have people having sex. You have all the food in in the world that you could want. Um, people just reveling and and drinking and having what looks like a good time. But I think what draws your eye the most is this person in the center, this woman in the center of the painting, um, and she, you know she's just in the middle of it all. And she just doesn't look like she's happy. Yeah. Uh, or like she doesn't look like she's achieved some kind of peace um, or something like that. She also says she's bored, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And the way Bishop Robert Barron described this was like he thinks this painting is a good depiction of what hell looks like. Yeah. And it's funny because, you know, you think about your, I guess, the way you, you thought about hell when you were a kid. And it's like, oh, <laughs> all the fires. fire, <laughs> <laughs> flames and red and yellow. But uh, no, it's... You look at this painting and it, it, it looks like it could be something that's happening, you know, in your own life almost. Um, yeah. And or in today, like basically in today's times. Yeah. I'm not accusing people of living this kind of life. But um, and yet you see this person in the middle just uh, just not happy at all. I mean, it's one of those things that I feel like, especially in today's society, we can all relate to. Yeah. Right. Like at some point or other in our lives, we've had this thing that we've imagined, like this will make my life perfect. Right. Like. If I get that Game Boy Color, like, I will be the happiest person in the world, <laughs> yeah. you know? And then you get it, and then you get bored of it. And, yeah. it's like, and it just becomes like, well, what's the next thing? Well, yeah. what's the next thing? Well, what's the next thing? And that's kind of what's being captured here, right? Is, is that when when everything is about what I want, then once I get it, then there's something else that I'm going to need to want, yeah. right? And, and it just... Um, it never quite satisfies. Like, you'll, you'll get that fleeting joy, but it never quite satisfies. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's... That's why, you know, we started this episode talking about marriage um, and it, it was it was great, you know, just in terms of, you know, we just talked about vocations and yeah. um, these are definitely common questions that I've encountered um, yeah. that I've even wondered about myself. Yeah, um, yeah. But really, the underlying thing is just that, yeah, you need to follow, you, you need to follow Christ, not because you're going to heaven, um, like just as a destination point, right? Yeah. Like it's not just a goal or an objective. Mm -hmm. You want to get to heaven because that's where you're going to, you're not going to end up looking like this woman in the painting who, yeah. who's totally bored, who's frankly, she just looks sad. Yeah. Um, and so you're going to find, um, you know, the joyous feast in heaven and you do that by following, by following Jesus. Yeah, no, absolutely. So, so let's talk about it. So let's say we accept this even on its principles, right? Maybe, maybe it's not something that's internalized. Well, like, how have you and I kind of taken this concept and integrated that into our prayer? Um, well, one of the things that I can say that I've done, right, is is to try and look for the moments when I can, when I know in my head, I can pray the most effectively, right? So, so the way I think about it is, when am I the closest in my in my current life to experiencing that fullness of life? Mm -hmm. And and to me, the answer is when I receive communion in a state of grace. Because if you think about it, right, to be in a state of grace, meaning to not be living a life in mortal sin, right, to not have to, to have gone to confession and kind of clean the, clear the slate, so to speak, right? Going to receive communion, when you receive communion, two things happen. One, you're, you're you know, united with God. You receive him into your body. Two, all venial sins, so all, all of those lesser sins are, are forgiven as well. Mm -hmm. So that's the moment when I am the most without sin and I have just received God. So that tells me this is, in my current state, the closest I can be to that. So what I try to do in those moments is I try to pray, actually, God, like, help me capture this moment, help me receive your grace, and help me to align myself towards you. Mm -hmm. right? That's become my prayer ever since I heard, this, like, change to that verbiage since this past Sunday. I mean, however long it's been, but... That kind of moment, trying to capture that moment, right? I like that. Well, so we went to mass together, and we okay. So we both went to receive the sacrament of reconciliation, and then we both went to mass together before recording this podcast. So this is like a holy podcast. Um, <laughs> but in terms of prayer for me, what comes to mind is uh, going against my inclinations, mm. and so what I mean by that is one of the biggest. Um, probably the biggest deadly sin that I struggle with is sloth. Mm. And so, you know, whether it's at work and I feel like procrastinating and just not doing what it is that is in front of me yeah. for me to diligently do, whether it's with ministry work, whether it's even with um, like leisure. Like if I, if I, for example, if I plan to watch a movie at night and it's 8 p.m. and I'm like, oh, I can, I can scroll on my phone for half sure. an hour or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 
and then it's suddenly 10 p.m. and I still haven't started my movie. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something that I do pretty often. And so what I found is I need to recognize these moments of sloth, mm-hmm. of laziness, of procrastination. And uh, those are the moments when I need to pray. Yeah. That I need to fill those moments. And uh, so what, I, what I'm trying to get at is, you know, I can, I guess my, my quote unquote earthly pleasure in this sense is um, just living without a purpose almost, right? Sure, living in yeah. a slothful way. Um, but if I do that, then I end up looking like this sad woman in the painting. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, totally. Um, another thing that I think we can do is to try and look at, at the other half of the coin, right? So, um, praying that God gives you the grace to see life more and more as a gift. Um, and, and I, and I mean that more, more than in the sense of like, I'm alive, great. Right. But like the things in my life, can I see more and more of them as gifts coming from God? Yeah. Right. Uh, can I see, you know, the fact that you and I are able to go to confession today and go to mass together before this podcast, that's not something we planned mm-hmm. and it just kind of happened. And that's such a grace, right? Yeah, that's such a gift for sure. and things like that. The more that we can recognize those, I think the easier the rest of this becomes, because if we can recognize the small gifts that are coming into our lives, then it's a lot easier, I think, to start training ourselves towards uh, the love that we can give, right? And to start focusing on that side of things. So speaking of the love that you can give, I think, yeah, the most practical way of, of looking at all of this, of looking at what God is calling us to do and the path that he's calling us to follow and understanding that, you know, the things that we've talked about today and of course all the other teachings that, that the church has and understanding those that those things aren't rules. Yeah. I think the practical thing is looking at it where um, you need to realize what love demands. Yeah. Um, and this does actually relate to to our our how we started this off about marriage, about relationship. But um, you know, relationship with with your friends and your family and your spouse, like you know, all of that is is I guess probably more straightforward and obvious. Where sure. yeah, like you need to make sacrifices for in order to make things work with, with this person. Yeah. And you know, right now, fifty days into your engagement, you have no idea what's coming ten years. Yeah. And I'm sure if we're still recording in ten years, you'll have a lot more stories about. Um, what you've learned in, in your relationship with Cherry yeah. um, as a married couple. But I think also looking at this as um, what does your love for Christ demand, yeah. right? Um, understanding, again, I can't keep saying this, but understanding that it's not rules, yeah. that this relationship that you're trying to fulfill with Christ, um, the more you are able to fulfill that, the more you are able to see that um the, the teachings of the church just bring you to, as we've been saying, a fuller life. Uh, the ha- the more at peace that you'll be, the happier that you'll be. Yeah, right? totally. And I think, look, like it's it's one thing to say, look for this in, in your relationship with Jesus. And that's something that absolutely all of us need to be pursuing more and more. But, you know, what do we do if that's something that isn't as a parent, right? Maybe, you know, I, I don't know what my relationship with Jesus is like. Well, let's focus on the relationships that we do know about then, right? Yeah. You know, you mentioned, yeah. you know, the relationships with family, with friends, right? Um, look, at the end of the day, these people are in your life for a reason, right? And and there is an element of love that you're going to be able to recognize in these other people. So I guess another thing that we can do is to try and think about what does a proper friendship with this person look like? Like for me and you, right? Mm-hmm. What is a proper friendship between me and you? Is it is it that I just ignore all the things that are like, let's say there are things that you do that annoy, that annoy me. Yeah. Do I just ignore them or do I bring them up? And can I say these things in a loving way? Like yeah. these are things where if we're honest with, with ourselves, we can kind of piece together what this proper friendship is. Mm-hmm. So if we can piece that together and if we can think about, am I able to do that? Am I confident in, in being able to do that? Right. Then maybe these are things that we can work towards tangibly in, in, in kind of smaller steps to try and move towards this better relationship, move towards this better understanding of exactly what you mentioned, that love, that gift of self. I love making the analogy. Um, I don't, yeah, I guess the analogy of looking at your relationships with others when you're, because for me, um, a lot of my faith formation, you know, into my teens and whatever, um, it was, diff- yeah, as a cradle Catholic, it was difficult for me to try to understand what it was like to have a relationship with Jesus. I, ha- mm-hmm. I knew my prayers. I did my volunteering and ministry and stuff like that. But yeah, um, but, you know, actually establishing a relationship with Jesus, I didn't really make much headway into that until I was like, well, like, how am I in my relationship with Andrew or yeah. with um, with my family and, and all these different people in my life where even even the people that, you know, I'm, I might have had some gripes against. Yeah. It's sort of like, how can that relationship, what can I learn from those things? Um, 
so that I can ultimately um, have a better relationship with Christ. Yeah. I love doing that. Totally. Yeah. And, and here's a little, you know, uh, fun little tip. If we're having any particular relationships that we know are tough, that, that we're having a hard time with, I almost, I guarantee you that there's something in the Bible that you don't know about that's going to help. So if there's something that you're having a hard time with, go to your parish priest, go to someone more learned in the faith than you, go find someone and say, hey, is there a Bible passage that will help me with this X relationship? I'm, I have this coworker who just frustrates the heck out of me. You know, I, I think my family needs to pray more and I don't know how to tell them, mm-hmm. right? Whatever it is. I, I guarantee you there, there's something you haven't found yet. And if my my experience is anything to go by, right, then it's going to be one of those things where you read it once. You're like, wow, I probably heard this at mass sometime, but I never really took the time to pay attention to it. And now that I am, this makes sense. And this is yeah. pretty tough. Yeah. So let me spend some time with this passage. And well, it resonates with you in a different way, right? Like yeah. you, you have a new experience and now, now it makes sense in, through a whole new lens. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Um, so is there anything else you want to add or no yeah so we started off this episode you know talking about marriage and you know for for a specific reason we we did want to talk about some common questions that you know both of mm-hmm. us have heard and especially since you know within the context of Andrew having becoming engaged with Cherry um, these are all very relevant things uh, I'm in that stage of my life where all of my friends are getting married um, and so I'm watching all this happen and it's awesome and I'm not but it's okay <laughs> um, no I'm kidding but yeah you know it, it's definitely a common thing that I think that that's coming up but really, we, we did want to zoom out and talk about how um, it's it's about following Christ and yeah. what, what it takes to follow Christ. It might seem like, you know, you're looking at the road ahead and it looks like a lot of a lot of difficulty um, or, you know, you, it feels like you're you're binding yourself to some kind of life um, that you're feeling shackled to. Yeah. But when you start living it and you see the fruits that come out of it. Yeah, um, I think you'll find you know happiness and peace in a way that you've never experienced. Maybe maybe one last point here yeah, yeah. is um, kind of speaking to to that realm. Let's talk about your, yourself in a sense, right? Where you might see your friends kind of moving to that stage, and and it, I think it'd be easy, honestly, to get a little bit disappointed, get a little bit down, right? Right. So it was a joke, but yes, <laughs> but I'm not I'm not saying yeah, it in your yeah, situation, no, right? Yeah. But like. Um, or even even when we start taking a look at you know following all these rules right this this whole concept of like why does God want me to do things this way yeah. right? I think that one of the things that we want to be able to understand is when life comes as a gift right then then it comes when yeah. it's appropriate yeah it, it, we can think about you know probably at some point in our lives uh, something that finally clicked think you know um, I don't know in, in university math or or even uh, high school math mm-hmm. right where you you get to learning Pythagoras theorem, let's say, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, okay, th- these are starting to kind of make sense based on the foundations I brought up. If you try to teach someone in grade five Pythagoras, they're not going to get it, yeah. right? And in that same way, you know, sometimes it's grueling, sometimes it's slow, but sometimes that's what you need to get to the spot where you can fully receive what's meant to be given to you. Um, so for anyone who's, you know, discerning, you know, I don't think I'm called to the religious life. I don't know that I'm called to single life. I really feel called to marriage, but I haven't met that yeah. person yet. Yeah. You know, God's probably preparing you in some way that you don't even realize. He definitely like, is. He definitely yeah, is. Yeah, for sure. Right, and and similarly for people who are dating or engaged or married, and you're thinking about things like, um, you know, I'm dating, but when will I feel ready for marriage? We're married, but when are we going to have kids? We're trying, but we can't. You know, these types of kind of thoughts that really tie into all of this. Give God the time to work on you to get you ready to be at that spot, I think. Um, something that I've found really helpful in those moments where, yeah, I, I am a little uncertain about the future. Um, there's a prayer that a friend recommended to me uh, written by the Sisters of Life called the Litany of Trust. And it's such a beautiful prayer. It just kind of tackles all these different ways that, you know, doubt and uncertainty enters into your life and yeah. you get your fears and anxieties from them. And the litany just ends every single line ends with Jesus. I trust in you. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's just such a great reminder f- for me to, it covers all these different areas where, um, yeah, where I might be a little worried. Yeah. And then I'm just like, never mind, Jesus has got it. So it's yeah, fine. definitely. Yeah. So I think that's it for today. Um, I know we covered a, a bunch of different areas. We did start off with marriage and, um, you know, now we're talking about from a bit more of a macro perspective, just, 
what it means to um, to be disciples of Christ, I think. Yeah. I think that's what it comes kind of boils down to. And uh, I think you'll find that that's kind of the tone of our podcast a lot, right? Yeah. You know, really, Andrew and I are really just, we're on our own discipleship journey as well. And we, we haven't been living this for more than a few months at the most. Yeah. Um, so, so we do hope that, you know, there's something from this that you can learn from. And um, hey, like we said off the top, uh, we already have one episode out. Um, just to do a quick plug, you can find us on Spotify. You can find us on uh, Apple Podcasts, if that's your thing. Google Podcasts. I don't know anyone who actually uses that, but it's it's on there. Um, and any, anywhere else that you get your podcast, if you look up The Road from Emmaus, uh, you'll find us. So yep. uh, give us a listen, um, and you'll hear from us next time, hopefully in a couple weeks. All right. Thanks, everyone.